what's up? Howdy, Dave. What's up, Dave? Andy. Matthew. Hey, from Michigan. Steve. Yes, it's Steve. Monday. It's Steve and it's Dollar Steve. And it's Corey. Yay, it's Monday. It's Monday. Oh, no, not really. Hey, George. <sighs> John. Colin. What's up, buddy? Cody. How's it hanging? A little to the left, a little to the right. Ah. Uh, I'm sorry. What? I'm tired. Yeah, it's been a long weekend. Uh, yeah. Um, you had a uh, you had a good weekend. Yes. Uh, Sebastian. Good Sunday. Yeah, Sebastian yeah. turned two. Sebastian turned two. Yeah. yeah. So you did entirely too much for a two-year-old. You think so? I know so. I've been we've been talking about it all week. Of course. <laughs> you went way overboard for a two-year-old. It's well, funny because Gabby's like. You know what? Let's make it in the house. Bill! Done. Yeah. And I'm like, no. Ex Mr. Gander, Arkansas, <coughs> here. Yeah, Ex Mr. Gander, Florida person here. Um, Dead Center. Is it? Yeah, it kind of looks that way. Well, it's just the two of us this week. Uh, I was at Disney with some friends. Hey, from Toronto. What's up, Tony? Uh, Tony from the UK. What's up, buddy? I've only missed three shows, not five. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. I'm trying to get used to these new chairs, and uh, thank you, Pioneer, for sending them. Um, What's up, Jason? Now the only problem is, is that when we have guests on, they don't want to sit in them because they say Pioneer on. So. so, oh well, we'll put some duct tape on them. I think that'll solve that. What's yeah, up, can, Jason? Can take this hello, one off. hello. No, it's the same on both sides. Because that was my thought was to was to switch it, but it's Pioneer on both sides. Oh, okay. You can't take right. it. And then I was going to spray paint or use some vinyl dye, but then it would just make the Pioneer shiny. Dang, so I think fine. we'll just use the black duct tape and so, <laughs> you know, quit, quit your complaining. Um, so other than that, uh, as you guys know, if you've been watching the show the past couple days, yep. we hit 50 subscribers on YouTube. Yep. Uh, so for all you guys that are subscribers, thank you so much. Thank you for the support. Um, we are doing a giveaway. So if you watch today's show, or if you haven't watched today's show, don't worry, don't stress. It's for two weeks of equal open registration. So go ahead and check that out. We're not going to promote it here on YouTube because I don't want to get yelled at by YouTube. So just okay. just head over to the head over to, uh, get yelled at by Facebook. Facebook. My bad. Did I say okay. YouTube. Yeah. We're gonna promote the hell of it on YouTube, but uh, Facebook wise, just head over to the YouTube channel. Uh, check out today's video. Uh, we're giving away some stuff. Uh, yeah. To thank you guys for joining or being part of this joyous ride that we call Five Star Car Stereo and Car Audio Talk. So, if we seem a little tired today, we are. We are. I mean, you know, it's uh, the joys of you, many of you know out there working <laughs> six days a week, yeah. running, and then trying to do Demo Dan. What's up? Trying to do some fun stuff with the family. It gets rough. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you can't see me sitting in them. I know, Jason. It's so silly. It's yeah. so silly. Yeah. Um, did you, by chance, check out the video that... Um, I, know, I know you didn't because you had such a busy weekend, but uh, Old School Car Stereo put up a video of a guy in Alaska that built this uh, home system for, okay. his, for his room using all amplifiers, all 12-volt amplifiers. The coolest thing out of all of it was how he's powering his batteries. All right, so he's a mechanic. Okay. So he took two 220 amp um, alternators from like ambulances, okay, and then took a uh, two horse electric motor. Okay. So he built this rig, so he plugs the electric motor, it's a 220. Okay. So he plugs that into the wall. Uh, so think of it like a pool pump motor, okay, and it spins the two alternators. So instead of going and buying some giant battery chargers and all that other crazy stuff, yeah, he just bought a bought had two, probably had the alternators <laughs> laying around, yeah, and just like a, like a motor, like a pool pump motor, and boom, he's charging the batteries. It was the crazy. I'm like, that was that was good. I, it, it seems so obvious, but not. You know, it was just like, oh, that is genius. <laughs> yeah, that was it was great. So, and then, so if you guys aren't familiar with that, it's old school car stereo. He yep. likes to do amp reviews and stuff like that. He test, uh, does the test dyno reviews, on them. Yeah. But check that video out. It's, 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 it's cool. Um, yeah. It's nice to see what other people come up with. You know, I like that. Uh, and then James put yes. out another video on, uh, on? on car audio, et cetera. 
uh, which I didn't but get a what? chance. No. Uh, he's basically just get, getting everybody up to date, telling them, you know, his new job because he's not a car stereo installer anymore, which is sad. You think he's um, going to be able to do uh, videos on the home? I, I think we'll just have to wait and see. I feel like anytime you start a new job, you got to kind of get your feet wet and mm -hmm. uh, figure out what you can and can't get away with. Yeah. Uh, not what you can and can't do. Um, and then you move from there and, uh, you know, see what see what happens. Yeah. Everyone kind of wants him to try to, you know, because he, you know, he's an entertaining force. Yeah. And uh, he's, yeah, he's a smart kid, so. Biggity wheez, yeah. And I can call him a kid because I'm old. Yeah. Um, so from there, very creative. Yes, it was. What's up, Donnie? Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. David from Plant City. And another funny thing um, on the video, on another video we put up on one of the live shows, I don't remember which one. Yeah. A guy says, check it in from 49th in Almerton. Okay. Now, use your mental map. Okay. And think of Almerton and 49th. So 49th yeah. Street's right up here. Yeah. And Almerton is right there. What's the, yeah. what's on 49th and Almerton? Uh, jail. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, come on. It's not like, hey, please let me there's, watch there's, these guys. There's a jail, there's bailer bonds, and there's a, uh, <laughs> uh, a, 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 a checkers. I okay. pose that maybe he's eating dinner at checkers, getting some of those yummy checker fries and a uh, you know, banana shake. Well, um, I mean, for, uh, I don't know. I just thought it was funny. They pointed it out, not me. I was just like, oh, damn, he's right. It's the jail. Oh, okay. Yeah, but technically, jail is before. Yeah, it's a little bit before. Yeah, so, because, yeah. like, Ulmerton is... Yeah, 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 it's up the street away. And so. then it's the gas station. There right is the there. gas station. But still, it was funny. I thought that was a trip. All right. So, all right. So, as we said, tonight's show, it's just the two of us. We have no guests. Joy. Um, I know you guys like the guests, but every now and then... Uh, every now and then you like to guess, but yep. tonight it's just going to be questions. So I know there's some queued up because I'm watching them fly over here. Oh, which reminds me, how do you guys, any of you guys that, that catch the um, the YouTube version of this, uh, it's clearly different than it used to be. So, uh, and I know a lot of you guys will watch this on YouTube and you're going to be like, hey, he's talking to me. Um, let me know what you guys think of the new format, the way the videos, the YouTube version of this live show is being broadcast. Uh, let me know what you think of that. And also, for those of you that don't know, we still do a we're, we're doing a podcast. The podcast goes live Wednesday Wednesday night or Thursday, depending on when we get a chance to film it. Yeah. Uh, and it's an original podcast. We also put up the two long live shows as podcasts, so you can just listen to them because we don't really do much other. So these are great things to listen to if you know you can't catch them when they're live and you don't want to watch the video. All right, and you yeah. can find those. Podcast three places: the Google, the Google Play Store, uh, iTunes, and also Podbeam. Hit me. All right. No, I just want to say uh, shout out to Matt Leonard Garcia. Oh, he cool. watched every video, so thank you. Oh, Cody likes the new format. Thank you, Cody. Nice. All right. So okay. eight inch. Eight inch of two ohm. Two ohm. Two and ohm. And another eight. one. It's a twelve inch of four ohm. My question is, can I wire them at the same amplifier? So, yeah, I mean, it, as long as the amplifier is, <coughs> so you oh. have, what's, one's 4 ohm, one's 2 ohm. One's an 8 inch, one's a 12 inch. Yeah. I mean, if we're just talking ohm load, as long as you have an amp that'll do like 1 ohm, yeah. But I don't think I would do that just on the fact of pure power handling. Um, you know, I mean, yes, you could do it technically, but it's going to be weird because the 8 is definitely going to ramp up faster than the 12. Yeah. Drew, what's up, buddy? Uh, for K, so, yes, yeah. we have it in the we have it in the, in the store. What's uh, that? DSPs. Yeah, yeah, we stock everything. Yeah. Everything. That's how we make all these cool videos. Two of them stable all day. All right, Eddie. Uh, what speaker should I get for my Wrangler? Well, it depends. If you like it, you know, we do a lot of Wranglers, as you guys know, <laughs> and we put a I lot see, of sorry. the uh, the punch. punch. We also Rock put Ford. a lot of Type R's in there. Mm -hmm. um, we've done some energy, high energy. Yeah. Uh, it just comes down to loud. I feel that, you know, whether you're going to do an amp or not do an amp, uh, if you're going to do an amp, you know, get something that can handle the amp, you know. Yeah. Uh, the Power Series Rockfords, which are above the punch, are now more affordable. So we've been doing a couple of those in Jeeps, and they sound really, really nice. So, yeah. I mean, it just comes down to, you know, Rockford is a loud brand, uh, Hertz is a loud brand. There's a lot of good speakers. You know, it just depends what you listen to. Yeah, uh, O'Neill is driving to Disney next year. Hoping you guys can work on my truck when I get there. 
Okay. There you go. We'll be here unless we're at Disney. <laughs> I know. I'm at Disney. Okay, okay. In your opinion, will the 3300 NEX or it's a replacement, whatever way you want to look at it, have a chance in hell of having wireless Andreato? So, no, there's not going to be, there no. won't be a flip out with Android Auto, for sure, <coughs> not anytime soon. Um, Kicker's going to, I'm sorry, Kenwood is going to run forward with Android Auto, their uh, wireless Android Auto. I feel they're going to be the first to market with that, and it's not going to be on anything flip out. So, that's not to say something won't come years from now, yeah. but I don't think you're going to see anything like that anytime soon. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest, we just got Android Auto on a flip out. So, yes, correct. You know, that's pretty impressive in itself. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so. There's tons of questions, just pick one. <clears throat> no. Yeah, there's um, tons. I'm looking at tons of. Well, I'm just reading in order. All right, we'll keep okay. going. <clears throat> Skip. It's, <laughs> is 110 and all for sound quality? <clears throat> or oh, which one do you recommend? So, okay, so great question. We just did a PT Cruiser. Customer has a full Alpine system in it. He's got Type R components up front, Type R components in the back, or coaxles in the back. He's got 5x7 Type R's in the rear. He's got one Type R10. He's got two Rockford Power Series 604's powering everything, so everything's on it. Got a channel, and he listens to rock, um, and it's got plenty of power. He's actually got it in a seal box. Yep. And it's got tons of bass for what he's trying to do. So is 110 good enough for a sound quality system? Definitely, definitely. I mean, you know, but make sure you get a 10 that can handle some power. So you're gonna wanna put some power to it. It's like he went with a Type R. You know, now they have like a Type X, which is nice. Uh, you have like Rockford makes, well, Rockford's a boomy sub. I wouldn't yeah. really go that mm -hmm. far. I'm just trying to think. You know, okay, so like Focal makes a nice, they make the K2 sub, which is nice. They make the uh, flax sub, which is nice. That'll work well. So get a nice sub that can handle some power and not an SPL sub. You, you mm -hmm. know, if you're a JL guy, the 6, the JL 6 is, is for sound quality. So check them out. All right, Kate. Uh, Kate say, uh, have you guys installed the Rockford DSR1 yet as a standalone DSP? Uh, I worry about the reviews, taking about and issues and everything, so I don't want to pull the trigger yet. Um, <coughs> that's a no. We, we've only just played with the DSR-1. We do have Christian that's on here. He's got, he's right there. Christian, Christian. Yep. has a DSR-1. He's had it in his uh, Audi now for uh -huh. going on three, maybe four months. Correct. No issues whatsoever. He's running it high level, though. He's not running it through the iDatalink portion of it. So if that if you're thinking iData link um, for the iData stuff, honestly, we've been doing the Kenwood uh, 600 DSP amplifier for that because it came out first, and you know it was that's what we like because it just made things a little bit easier. Oh, he's had it for two months. Okay, thanks, Christian. Yeah. Um, so yeah, nice. Uh, he likes his, but yeah. Okay. All right. Hey oh, guy. real quick, real quick, before we go on. Mm -hmm. uh, installer's asking, any tips for setting the um, AccuBase? Set it backwards, turn it all the way up, and then start turning it down. Because if you go from up to, if you go from down to up, there's a 10 second delay before it actually activates. So what you wanna do is start going, turn it both all the way up, and then slowly turn it down and stop, okay, because when you're turning it up, you have to wait 10 seconds for it actually to turn on. So Audio Control recommends starting with it all the way up and turning the other way. Uh, when you're trying to set one up on a, like a, you know, like a LC2, LC7, that whole thing, it's a pain in the butt. It's even, it's hard. I mean, we typically put an RTA on the signal and take a look at it, and that's how we set it. And even still, it's still very difficult. Um, talking with Chris Bennett at Audio Control, going forward, anytime they rebuild or build a new product, there's going to be a light for it, like on the DM608 and the DM810, it's actually, there's a light built into the software, so it actually turns on when it needs to, but yeah, it's, it's very difficult, there's, All there's right. no great way. <clears throat> Alright, okay, hey ahead, guys, um, I have the Ampro TY12 on my 2015 Camry. Okay. Look it up with a Rock 4 full channel and a Rock 4 P312. Okay. It powers up. It's great. Um, but now it's not hitting hard like it was with the LC7i. 
So in the Amprov knob, it's all the way up. So the LC7i, because of the AccuBase, is probably what was causing that. Um, the AccuBase is a huge bass boost. It's a giant bass boost. So now that you don't have that bass boost in there, you're just hearing this, the signal, that's where your problem is probably coming from. You're gonna need some form of uh, bass boost, either from an EQ or maybe check out getting into a, um, what am I thinking? Yeah. Bass boost. Uh, audio control. Uh, these are one? No, no. Uh, epicenter. Yeah. Uh, check out something like an epicenter. If your amplifier, I know, sorry. And I was pointing over here. Come on, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. Check out maybe something like an epicenter if your amplifier doesn't have a bass boost built into it. A lot of amplifiers have some form of like 12 dB bass boost. The other thing you can look at too is depending on the radio put in, like a Pioneer has. Um, uh, a bass boost built into it. It's like bass EQ or something like that. It's six levels of adjustment. You can turn that up and that'll help give that feel. But yeah, you're probably missing that accu bass. Okay, go ahead. All right, crazy issue. Crazy, crazy issue. I have four eights in a Hyundai Velocity Rockford Fosgate T1500 at two ohms. Okay. I have done the big three factory battery and the alternator. Uh, I add the Nor North Star. Yep. S SMS a AGM 80. Okay. In the back, I have three 200 amp fuses between the alternator and the battery and the second battery. Okay. I blew several fuses on the car, including the multi fuse. Oh. I tried replacing. They say uh, replacing. Yeah. Uh, it blew immediately. Oh shit. So I currently have no power steering or no power from the alternator. Hmm. Wow. So, I mean, if you're blowing fuses at the end of the day, you're going to need to do some troubleshooting. So naturally, the first thing is to find out if there's anything wrong with the factory. So take all the silliness off, meaning take off your power wire coming from your alternator to your new battery. So disconnect your big three. Uh, you can leave the grounds, that's not going to hurt anything, but disconnect the power wire, disconnect anything going to the factory battery. Just get the car back to normal, meaning Rate, ba basic, basic, no, nothing connected, and see what happens. See if everything works the way it's supposed to and you're not blowing any fuses. Then you can kind of go forward and figure out what's going on. At worst case, you may have a wire that's melted or touching that you're not seeing. Let's hope not. Um, but that's, that's where you want to start. You always want to get back to, to, to page one, and then you can move forward with figuring out what's going on. Because if you're blowing that multiplex factory fuse, there's, that's not right. That should not happen. So you're going to need to disconnect some stuff to figure out why. Yeah. And that's where we would start. We would literally pull everything, disconnect everything that's not factory, and start moving forward from there All with right. the digital multimeter testing things. All right. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Christian, I love Ultra, man. He went to Ultra. Wow. Who went to, who, who went to Ultra. There? Christian? Ultra? Yeah, in what? Miami. Ultra? Ultra. What's Ultra? It's all the DJs and just well, yeah, party three days. He, yeah, yeah. You well, know, he does stuff awesome. like that. He's a party guy. <clears throat> okay. That's good. Um, hey, guys. Question in here. Does the Pioneer Auto EQ makes a curve for each speaker or is just a general curve? Saludos desde Mexico. So, <clears throat> Pioneer Auto EQ is one of those weird things that Pioneer really doesn't talk about much. It doesn't actually affect the EQ. So what it's EQing is behind, meaning you don't actually get to see what it's actually EQing. Really the only thing, once it runs its EQ, you get to see is the time delay and the volume for the speakers. We know it's doing some form of secondary EQing, but they're not giving us tons of information when we ask them about it as far as what it's actually doing other than, hey, it's, it's doing its thing. So I honestly don't know. I'm guessing that it is definitely, other than time delay, and we, we know there's actually some EQ happening there. We don't know how in-depth it is. Um, I've asked. I've kind of gotten nothing. So if I ever do get anything about it, we'll put a video up of talking more about it. We know that it works rather well, and the only time, like, it works rather well, and we use it as a great starting point because um, the time delay usually is on pretty close. Uh, the volume control is, is never where we want it. Um, but yeah, go ahead. All right. Um, using an audio control DMA10 
in my 2012 CRV, yep. the OEM system. Okay. First time using this processor is there a way I can see a full range audio out of the DMA10 software. Dashboard O is just a limited display in the input channels individually. My input channel consists in OEM Twitter, mid and rear and so. I, I, so he wants to just see a full range output? Yeah. Out of the DMA10? Well, you'd have to sum the channels together. I mean, it just depends what you're trying to do. So, I mean, out of any any one of the out of, out of any processor, whether it's a uh, analog, digital, it doesn't matter. I mean, the whole idea is to try to get to. Okay, you're still limited by the factory radio. So you you just because you sum in, let's say, a tweeter, a mid range, and a sub, doesn't mean you're going to get a full range signal out of it. It just means you're going to get some sound that could possibly be EQ'd and possibly blended into mm -hmm. something that looks like a full range sound. Um, sometimes you, you, there's a lot of things that can go wrong when you're summing channels together. So you have to be careful. What audio control is giving you is the display so that you can kind of see what's happening on the channels that are coming in. You have input RTA, you have output RTA, uh, you have a lot to work with, but you still, it's not everything. Sometimes, you know, you need like an overlay. It's tough. I mean, the, these are really sophisticated products. I mean, and that's why we still have all the handheld RTAs because we want to be able to look at everything coming in, everything coming out. The DM810 608 software gets us a lot closer. Yeah. But you have to tell it in the software, like, you know, if you have a tweeter coming in and a mid-range coming in, you have to tell it, I want to sub channels one, two, and three, and four together so that I can get channel output one to play those two channels together. It's not, I mean, it's a lot of work. There's, there's no doubt about it. I mean, the first one we had when we set it up, we didn't even do time correction. No. We just did EQ and summing, and we yeah. spent five hours playing with it. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work for sure. Okay. All right, uh, Dean. Have you ever had a problem where the CHTO, the CHTO zero one harness for the two thousand seven Dodge Caliber, not turning the subwoofer, the ten amplifier, the Boston factory system? No. No. It's a CH. No. Yeah. The CHTO. What? Uh, oh one. That's the. Yeah. Um, the yeah, that's the Maestro yeah. CHD. No, because uh, no, all the okay. So w the question is: Is he's got a Maestro harness and he's putting in a Chrysler, and one of the speakers isn't playing? The way mm -hmm. the Chrysler system works is they just have a mon they just have a left and right input. It's not left, right, front, rear. It's still left, right input into the amplifier. That's it. So it's just two channel input. As long as there's those two channels. Basically, as long as there's something playing, like if you put the radio in and you get a left, you get a right speaker, everything in that amplifier should play. Regardless, that's it, you're done. Um, if the sub isn't playing, that's really weird. Now, if you can unplug it, plug the factory back in and the sub comes on, uh, hmm, that doesn't make any sense at all. Because there's no reason why it shouldn't. Yeah. I've never had that problem. Yeah, that's really weird. All right, uh, Dean, any idea why my 4100 NEX turns off when I plug my phone uh, to use CarPlay? If you, I don't plug my phone and use the Bluetooth, it works fine. So anytime you have an issue with the radio, naturally the pre-programmed answer that we're going to give everybody is make sure the software is up to date. So they just released a firmware version on that, I think, sometime and hold on. Hang on. Let's change. I'm gonna give it a couple okay. more minutes because it's still recording. Sorry, we're 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 swapping uh, cards today. Um, so once you've done that, the other thing too is always check a different cable. Grab a different cable. Grab a different phone, and see if they both do the same thing. Sometimes, like especially with iPhone cables, if you're using that crappy white one that it came with, it. it doesn't do well with heat and the wires will get crazy and melt so I would not 
use that one. Hey Dave, what's up buddy? Yep. Um, but yeah, so those are really the two things that we typically run into problems with on those. And But I've never had one not, you know, we've never had one like you plug it in and the radio turns off. No. That's really weird. Yeah, that's really weird. Yeah, that's uh, okay, go all ahead. All right, let's see. Uh, how can I run a USB in a 2011 Prius from a Kenwood head unit? I'm sorry, read that one again. Just run a USB to the in the Prius. He wants to run a USB in the Prius? Yeah. Where uh, we, we normally put it, we put it down bottom. low. We, we, yeah. we typically what we do is in the Prius, you got the cool <coughs> little thingy that comes down here Just and you got that pocket underneath. It. There's a little panel on the bottom where the cigarette lighter is, or mm -hmm. I'm sorry, where the power point is. We typically will have it come out there or we'll grab the USB nickel flush and, mount. Um, and flush mount it down there. That's where we go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, I used to have a Kenwood DDX uh, 470. I already like it. How easy was to operate? Wonder was comparable to. So we had a Kenwood DDX 470. It was, it was easy to operate. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the, the conversation we have all the time. Um, so he had a Kenwood radio, and now he's thinking about upgrading to a new radio. You had a Kenwood buy another Kenwood. The operating system though has changed as far as like it's gotten better, it's flashier, it's you know, but for the most part the thought process is still the same. They, they don't really deviate much from that. You know, they might come with new icons, they might move a few things here and there, but it's still the same Kenwood software. So if you figured <laughs> out your Kenwood radio in the past, go ahead and get one again. Uh, as far as what's compatible with that particular radio, depends. I don't know which features that one had, but I would check out you know, the Exelon line, they basically make three Exelon radios, and we got 395, a 595, and a 795. And they all do basically the same thing. It's just a matter of features here and there. Okay. All right. Uh, look into a good recommendation for, for, uh, for speakers plus an amp to replace my stock already. I, I already have an aftermarket head unit. What kind of car? But I don't know what kind of car is that. Right, so that's skip important. That question. Yeah, you gotta tell us what kind um, of car. Hey, Corey. What's yeah, up, Haley? Uh, 2016 Denali, 30, 3500. Um, what front speakers will you choose? It's a Denali? Mm -hmm. So chances are good that's gonna have bows. And that's 16. It's not a 6x9? It's a 6x9 if it's a 16. Um, you know, for 6x9s, component wise, you know, there again, if it's a Bose system, it's going to it's gonna throw a hammer at this. Um, hey, um, Ryan. But if you're just looking for a good replacement, uh, you know, for 6x9s, that's becoming a real popular size now. Alpine makes two. They make the R. They make the S. Uh, I'm sorry. They make the X. They make the S, which are really nice. The S is pretty affordable. Uh, Pioneer just came out with the TSD 6x9 components, which is, there again, pretty affordable and nice. Um, Focal makes the integration series, I think is what it's called, which is a 6x9 tweeter. We use a lot of those in our videos, which are really nice. Yeah. If you don't want to go 6x9, if you want to go round, Kenwood has the Exelon XR1800s, which is a 7-inch, which is really nice. Uh, and then both, uh, Pat, I'm sorry, both bestkits.com, uh, or I'm sorry, both bestkits, which is yeah. pack-audio.com and metroonline.com, sell 6x9 adapters for that so you can retrofit it into the car. Okay. Right. 04 Chevy Tahoe, Jesse, I'm guessing that was the guy who was asking about uh, the re recommended speakers? Uh, no. Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, hey let's guys, see. Um, about JLW7 woofers. It's a great woofer. We don't sell them, but they're really loud. And, yes. you know, they sound great. And if you really like them, go check out Soundman's in his car. Yeah. It's quite ridiculous. Yeah. In a good way. All right, let's see. Um... 2000, 2000, oh, we already heard that, right? Uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Is there a replacement for a sub in the center console for a 2006 Sierra? GMC Sierra. So, really, okay, no, not really, other than JL makes the stealth box for that. Mm -hmm. That's really about the only thing I've ever seen that will, will, like, you pull out your factory and I'll put them in, and then you put the stealth box in, and you get, like, an amazing amount of bass out of that. They're super expensive, but, you know, if, if that's the car you like and you're going to keep it and you want a really amazing um, subwoofer and, and you're up for 500 bucks, uh, right. check it out. All right, so... 
Um, the T T Y. The T Y O one. Yeah. Uh, okay. Can I use the D S R one with the Amp Pro and will yes give me better sound? Yes. I got four channel on the highs and yeah. Yeah. To so give the me DS a better bass. Yes, you can. The D that'd be a great option. So the D S R one at the price. D S R one is is priced to move for sure. Uh, but yes, you can use an Amp Pro and a D S R one. The D S R one has R C inputs, as you know if you've seen the video. Uh, so you just plug the RC outputs, plug the RC inputs, you get the punch EQ back, which is nice. The punch EQ, uh, which is controllable on the uh, pad, um, or you could set up, now you're going to want to pick up the bass knob too. Yeah. Uh, that was the PLC2, I believe is what it's called. So you can have your sub over on control right there. So yeah, definitely check that All out. All right, uh, Christopher, uh, flip down monitor. It only has the power and ground. Instruction says tap into the 12 volt source. No fuse in line. Why do I tap into the power? So if it's just one of those uh, generic flip downs, two wire flip downs is like we like to call them, has an RC input and power and ground. What it's asking for is an accessory. You want it to hook up, it's got a red and a black wire. So it needs an accessory power. Uh, that's it. So, you know, if you have a radio, aftermarket radio in the car, or possibly a cigarette lighter that turns on and off with the key, you can go ahead and tap it there. Uh, if I don't know what car it is, but a lot of the times, you know, if you have, there's an accessory wire behind the, the dash, if there's an aftermarket radio in there, uh, you just have to be careful to make sure that there's enough amperage to turn on. Those are pretty low amperage, usually below <laughs> five, five amps, so you're good. All right, so let's see. Will the Kenwood XP1800 fit in the 2014 Nissan Sentra front, front doors? So that's the, the seven inch. And a Nissan Sentra. They may. They're gonna fit. Um, cause they're, you you have a spacer. Yeah. So they're gonna fit. Now, how easy they're gonna fit? I don't know, but you will be able to get them in there. That I can. Yeah, you'll be able to get them in there. It's just, it's it's you know it's not gonna be like, done, you know. So, cause what they do is they give you a half inch or. 3 8 inch spacer that goes from six and a half to the seven inch once you break like if you've seen us put them in it has the bracket it has all those little pieces mm -hmm. you can break off if you break them all off that's designed to be a spacer so that you can space it out and put the seven inch if it's a round hole now nissan's need a mounting bracket most of them do uh which we use the metro's mounting bracket you can check it out at metroonline.com just yeah. and if it needs that one um, but yeah, so you'll, be do, able, you'll be able to get it in there. It's just not going to be like a uh, done. Yeah. Uh, what size my L? Uh, Chris. All right. Let's see. Any dash kit for a 2011 Honda Civic that makes the radio more than 90 degrees. Mm. Not like mm. pointing up to the ceiling. Yeah. You know, that has always been a problem and I'm with you on that. I, I, if the kit was being made today, <clears throat> then they would they would tilt it more and everyone would be happy because that's what they do now. But no, no one's gone back to not, Chris, rebuild that kit to where it should be. So unfortunately, no. Uh, Rock for Fuzzy's shallow sub, speed 3 DS4, 10, rec recommended power, uh, P3 DS4, 8. So basically a P3 shallow mount 12, we typically put anywhere between Thanks. 10, that's the same 10, 12, handles the same power. Uh, we typically put three to 400 watts to it. What about the eight? Um, the eight, I don't know, man. I don't know, we never run an eight. Mm -mm. I, I've, I've, we always put a 10 or we 12. We do a 10 or 12, I've never ran the, the, the little, little eight. So um, I wouldn't be confident putting a lot of power to the eight, so. All right, so Josh say, guess you missed my question. Uh, do you guys do custom boxes? I have tried to call the store and it's your things. No, we don't. I don't know how that happens because Paul answers that phone oh, yeah. all day long. We don't do any custom boxes. All the custom boxes we want to have built, we go ahead and have brightstar.com uh, build, build them for us. Build them for us. Sean uh, is, is the guy there uh, that we deal with. Um, I just drop the box and then I send it to him. He builds it to me and brings it here. So like... Uh, and then we just order them as we need them. So like we built, we have an F350, 250 box that we have them build for us. Uh, we just came up with a new Tundra box 
for behind the seat so that we can put two P312 yeah. shell mounts behind the seat. Um, but yeah, we just we just drop what we want and then they just keep it and then as we need them they'll send them they'll they'll build them for us. They're here local. <clears throat> so all right, Vicente. Vicente say, is there a double DIN dash kit for the 2004 Dodge Durango? No. Uh it's not like the. No, I don't think it is. But you could probably, well, okay, so if there is going to be one, it's going to be on metraonline.com. Yeah. They make the, um. I just dropped my water. Yeah, they make the, the, the retro fit dash kits for double dins. If there is going to be one, they're the ones that are going to have it. So check that out. All right. So let's see. Hey, five star, ever had dust yes. behind the inside? Uh-huh. The 8200 display? Yeah. Um, how do you get it out? You don't. Um, honestly, the only thing I've ever done to get the dust out is I've taken my air compressor and just tried to blow it to a corner or blow it out. But yeah, dust, yeah, it happens. There's no doubt about it. All right. Uh, have you ever hooked up a four channel amp and a 2015 Grand Cherokee without the factory amp and still using the Apple, the Apple? Eight point what screen? Eight point four inch screen. Yeah. Uh, do not want to cut the factory harness. Yeah. So okay. So really nice. All right. So yes, we have to answer your question. Uh, we uh, we've done it in a Dodge Ram. Mm -hmm. It's the same harness same as harness. the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Yep. A lot of things have changed since we've had to do that, which is great. Um, Metra has come out with their DSP, and what, what made that great is that the DSP is, and we don't use the DSP, but what was nice about their DSP is it's high level as well as line level, so it's kind of like a DSR-1. But in doing so, they came out with a ton of T-harnesses that allow you to T into the back of the radio and give you your speaker wires in and out. So, if you go onto their webpage, which is, as we've said a lot tonight, unfortunately, is metroonline.com, you can go ahead and buy a T harness that's going to have speaker wire in, speaker wire out, plug directly into the back of the radio, and then you don't have to cut anything. So check that out. In the past, what we'd do is we'd build our own. So we would buy a reverse harness, um, which is like a 6511, BHO 6511. Uh, we'd grab one of our leftover um, harnesses that we have from all the radios that we swapped out. We'd repin a bunch of stuff, and we'd make it ourselves. Now you don't have to do that. Life has gotten a whole lot easier in the last six months, so check that out. All right, do you guys have any experience with the Metra 956539 kit? Which one is that? It's for a double thin 2001 to 2007 caravan. Have you oh, yeah. been able to find much online about it? Yeah, we've done a couple of those. Yeah. I even have a video with one of those in them. I think so. So, I can tell you this much. Most of the time the problem with that kit is that the caravan's dash is already falling apart. So, what we see all the time is that the top part of the dash where the kit snaps in, that vinyl has already started to come off the dash and roll up. And then also, most of them, the clips that hold the factory bezel in are starting to break also. With that being said, the kit works fine. It goes in. It doesn't look any worse than the factory one does at this point. So. Thank you, John, for listening. He's Thank you, working, John. Hey, but cool. he's listening. That's yeah. all. That's all you uh, need to do. So, yeah, the kit, it, it's not great, but neither is the factory. So. But it's not bad. Like like we do them. We've done I've in the last three or four months this year. I think we've probably done two, mm -hmm. two or three. So, and there again, like I said, the main problem is that the factory part that's still in the car is what's falling apart. All right. So Adam, that was the guy that he won a recommendation for the, the speakers that... and the amp. It's a 2010 Forester. 2010 Forester. Forester. Door speakers and the amp. Hmm. So that's, yeah, that's a Subaru, right? Subaru Forester, or who makes the Forester? I'm losing it, man. I, I'm losing I, it. Um, I thought the Forester But you can check open. Metra. What does he want? You want speakers uh, and amps. Door speakers and amps. For sizes? 
I mean, it's going to be a six and a half, more than likely. It's a uh, pretty ran, you know, pretty normal size. Okay. Um, and depends if you just want to sob. Yeah, I mean, you know, okay. At the end of the day, the if you walk thing. in here at five o'clock in the afternoon, we're going to sell you what's called a five o'clock special, which is a uh, Rockford Prime comps. 501 and two Kicker Comp 12s. <laughs> There's a million products for you to buy out there. There's tons. So asking, hey, what do you want? I don't know. I mean, if if you want to design a system, we need to talk on the phone. We need to, you know, and then we need to find what kind of music you listen to and then how much money you want to spend. There's a whole process involving that. I could recommend all kinds of things, um, but it just, it, there's a lot to it. So if you need to know sizes and stuff like that, uh, Metro has a, a calculator on there. Um, uh, Best Kits, uh, doc, be, yeah, not best kits, but packthatchaudio.com now. They're all telling you the sizes. So those are the two websites to really start. And then as far as like subs, amps, and stuff like that. That's there's, Subaru, yes. There, there's, yeah, so there's, yeah, thank you, Christian. Thank there's, you. A, there's a lot to choose from. I mean, there's a ton of stuff to yeah. choose from. And, and varying price points, all the way from, let's say, uh, $70 Planet Audio Amplifier up to like the Rockford we talked about. That's like, I don't know, 150 bucks. Mm -hmm. And then you could go crazy. You can get into a five channel, get into something like a... Uh, like a Kenwood 801.5, it's like 250 bucks five channel. It's really yeah. great. Um, are you gonna have to go line level? Yep. Do you want to do something that has bass boost like AccuBase, like we've talking about the LC2i earlier, um, or do you want to do something like an LC7i? Do you need like a DSR1, or do yeah. you just want to replace the radio and go with the new radio? Yep. So there's a lot of options. Okay. All right. Uh, on the 2007 caliber. I use the CHT01 harness for the amplifier custom system. Yeah. There are two amplifiers in the car. The harness, the harness only turn on one. Mm. That's the dosh, uh, the dash speakers, doors, rear, and, okay. but it doesn't turn on the subwoofer. Someone okay. online said that they need a pack harness because it has the correct turn on. Was playing fine with the factory unit. Okay. So, so it might just be that's weird so there might be a secondary remote turn on that it's missing because um, the pack harness i can tell you the pack harness wires up exactly the same way as the uh, idata harness um that's bizarre okay real simple though give idata a call um if you haven't already they will answer the phone and then ask talk talk to them um <laughs> because they, they 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 should know the answer to that question. I wish you, you were closer because obviously we could just go out there and take a look at it and figure this thing out. Um, so Fro was here for a little bit. I don't, yeah. I don't know where he went. Um, he probably he is working. I mean, of so, course. Um, okay. Hey, hey guys! I have two tan kicker comp C subwoofers. Would the Pioneer GM eighty six hundred one be good? Yeah. Push them. Yeah, yeah, we do that. That's that's a fairly common install that we do. Um, that's one of the amplifiers that goes through rotations as far as like what uh, Paul likes to sell, the 8601 and two Comp 12s. Yeah, we do that. Luckily right now, or I won't say luckily, but right now that's not in his rotation of amplifiers that we're putting in. But yes, the 8601 is a good amp for that. Make sure you plug in the bass knob. Make sure you plug the bass knob. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, 2004 Chevy Tahoe was the best way to hook up ignition turn on wire. It's for a high output alternator. Hmm. Ooh, what year? Uh, 2004. 2004 ignition wire. South Florida. Oh, that's a tough one. I, I honestly, you know, the ignition wire is going to be a low output monitoring, monitoring only ignition wire. It's not made to power anything. So you're going to have to find a high output ignition wire somewhere under the hood. I honestly have no idea on that one, man. I'm sorry. I, I, I only know where the low, you know, the low, the low output monitor only ignition wire is going to be a pink wire in the main harness. That's it. That's all I got. But a lot of the times that's not to power anything. What do you think about the 6x9s, uh, Sarah, making a comeback? Separates. Oh, separate. Okay. I think it's great. I'm I'm all for it. Yeah. You know, every manufacturer that comes in the door that we have an opportunity to talk with, the first question, one of the first questions I ask them is, when is your six by nine component coming out? And they just look at me and like, really? And I'm like, are you serious? Uh, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, Nissan, and Toyota all have six by nines in the front door that are all components. What do you have to offer? 
Oh, uh, we got a really nice set of six and a halfs. Great. Yeah. Great. You just keep running with that, my friend. Um, you know, yeah. let's be honest. I mean, you know, Kenwood makes the seven inch, which we did yes. today in that Mazda. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're, they're the mid-bass monsters. There's no question about it. As far as round speakers go that are affordable, those things put out a ton of mid-bass. But a six by nine will kick its butt every day. So... All right. And for those of you guys that love round speakers, that's fine. That's cool. Like, we do plenty of the 6x9s where we don't put 6x9s in. We go ahead and put in some high-end, like some K2s or some T2s or some high-energies. But it's all good. All right. Hey, guys. What can be the problem when, I, when a subwoofer making a weird smell when I play it? Uh, you're burning the voice coil? <sighs> so, okay. A lot of the times, like when you first power up a woofer and let it do its thing you, you get a little odor out of it and that's just because it's it's breaking in and it's heating yeah. up and all all it's like new car smell it's a new woofer smell so to speak where all the all the the lubricants and the glues and everything's heating up and moving and you get an odor out of it that's normal if you get it every time that's not normal uh, you should only get it for maybe the first couple times you play the woofer and that's it if you're constantly getting the smell you might be putting too much power to it and you might be like you might be on the on the road to burning a voice coil so all right derek yes uh have you have you done any install on the 2017-18 honda ridge line that doesn't look they have yeah, more look. space for yeah. subs even for a shower no you know and that's one of the boxes that sean keeps talking to us mm -hmm. about we haven't got one in yet and and the bright star guys have been asking us about that because they want to get in there with it and and see because yeah there is less room it seems it's weird though like that truck really isn't that popular here because everyone buys the big trucks pardon me so we, we don't get a, it's you know regionally I, i've come to figure out that regionally you guys get different cars than we do you know mm -hmm. which is weird because you'd think we get a lot of those but we get a lot of big trucks even though yeah. we're the flattest state there is and we have no bumps hills or anything i mean the biggest the biggest hill is man-made it's the skyway you know what I mean? yes <laughs> so and you don't need a truck to go over that um but we should sure get a ton of them i know yeah the pioneer uh, d series six bys are really nice yeah all okay. right hey guys any suggestion on the setup for a t1005 I got 4200 NAX in the dashboard, Dodge Ram 1500, mm -hmm. I like the show. What does he want to know? New Jersey. Uh, He's got a T1005? T1005. What, he gonna, what, do you want, what does he want to know? I mean, that's all speakers, my stuff. Speakers, probably. Oh, speakers? Speakers and stuff. Um, so that's, an, that's a, what year, does it say what year the Ram is? Nah, nope. Okay. All right, so you since okay, so you have a Dodge. Now, there's two ways I address the Dodge. The Dodge is we'll just group them all together because most of the time they have some form of like a six by nine on the door mm -hmm. and possibly a three and a half in the dash, and then in a Ram it's going to have a crappy little five and a quarter in the rear. Yeah. So, but the chargers and all those are basically the same minus the rear speaker. The rear speaker is usually going to be a six by nine. The rear speaker is the easy one. You typically just do a coaxial. So in the Ram, you do a five and a quarter, and it's just going to match whatever you put in the front so that the timber is all set and ready to go. Now, for the front, that's where it gets kind of tricky, depending on how you want to play it. So if you're like, man, I want this thing to be stupid loud all the time, then I put you into some form of a six by nine and some form of a three and a half. I cap yeah. off three and a half, so the 47 microfarad cap, and it just plays, and it sounds great, yeah. and it's loud. Now, if you want to do something with like imaging and really hone this, this like, yay, then you're going to want to do some form of component. And that's where you get into like the six by nines we were talking about, where you put the tweeter and the dash and the six by nine mid base in the door. It can be equally as loud depending on which ones you go with and how much power. Like you have a one thousand five, which is plenty of power, so you could go with some like X type Alpines in the, in the door and the, the tweeter up in the dash and get an amazing amount of sound out of it. Or you could go with something like some component six and tweeters. It just really depends on how loud you want it to be. Yeah. Uh, old school guys, thank you. Congrats on the 50k. Oh, thank you. Let's race to the to the hundred. Oh, I'm racing, yeah. buddy. We Thanks are in on. the same race. All right, hold on. All right, we're so we're, yep, we're good. We're All good. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, so let's... never cut off. So that's good. That's good. All right. Change recording cards. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I left the uh, I left the big one and sitting on my desk. Sorry. Saludos, Neta. Uh, let's see. Uh, 2000, 2004 Chevy Tahoe. 
What's the best way to hook up ignition? Oh. Did you ask that one already? I already asked that. I'm sorry. Okay. Thanks, guys, for the info. I knew I was curious about it. Uh, my factory stuff, it's falling apart. But say thank you. Uh, Dean, uh, we're taking about waiting certain harness made or well, we all located. What is the thing? Dean, we are, we are take, talking about wanting certain harnesses made or all with all pin. locations pinned. Mm -hmm. Contact uh, at JL Troy, Troy Company. Company. I think, I think they, they, they might, might be interesting working with you. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. Do that. Yeah. yeah. No, and that's the thing, you know, that's what I keep trying to talk to these other goofballs about, and they're all just like, you know, but no, we want harnesses with all the pins. Derek, say, Dean, I'm glad that you finally put a deck in your car. Do you like it? Where is Fro? I know. So, we're, let's take a minute and we'll talk about the 309 in the car, real quick. Um, so, we put the 309 <laughs> in the Camaro. Last week. Yes, we did. And the purpose of putting the 309 in the Camaro was two reasons. One, we want to be able to have some form of a rolling platform to which we can test radios, which was the key. So the 309 being the hottest radio right now, one of the hottest radios right now, is that I wanted to be able to, instead of just sitting with it on my table in my, in my kitchen and playing with it and figuring out all the features, I want to put it in my car. I want to see how the car play works, how yeah. well it tracks and stuff like that. Um, a lot of the comments about it, uh, it was one of our most disliked videos because, you know, I, I, which I get it. And it has nothing to do, I, I understand it has nothing to do with us. I think uh -huh. it's more for the fact that they, they don't like the radio. Not everyone likes a floating screen in the dash. Totally understand that. Yeah. Uh, so we've been playing with it, pushing all the buttons, figuring out everything it can do, figuring out everything it can't do. We're going to film a, uh, a review on the radio. It's typical, put it on the bench, talk about all the features. Uh, we've, we've pretty much nailed down everything that we want, th that we could figure out. Uh, and, and we're going to move on. So it's not staying in my car, I can tell you that right now. It's, it's going to come out because I, I want to put other radios in there so that I can play with those and touchy-feely the buttons. I'm happy to have a radio in my car finally. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that. It's been a lot of fun. And I just want to get on to the next one. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Uh, hello, guys. Looking to put a 3300 NEX in my 2002 Dodge Ram pickup. Um, just wonder if you, I can put two backup cameras on it. One on the bumper and one on the cargo light. So I can see when I'm backing up. Yes. On my trailer. You can okay. So most radios are only going to have a single camera input for rear. Uh, some will have a camera input for the front, and if that's the case, you can use the um, the front camera as a second rear camera. Mm -hmm. Pack also makes two additional products. They make a what is it? A v VI. I always get it wrong. It's like a VCI forty one and a VCI twenty one or something yes, like that. 21. Like a twenty one yes, and a forty one. Yeah. Um, the 21 is for two cameras and audio. The 41 is just for four cameras. Okay. Has triggers that you can switch between. Basically, what you need to do though is you just need to decide which one you want to have uh, on at a time. You could actually build a relay system to to do that, so you can just put in a toggle switch and a relay to flip between the two. But yeah, there there's a way to do what you're trying to do. All right. So should I be concerned? I had a. An error. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, message shut off in my 4200 NEX, and it will go away in five minutes. So amp error could <clears throat> be any any on a Pioneer, which is weird that you got it to say amp error because typically that doesn't happen on Pioneer. That's a Kenwood feature, um, but it would mean there's a short somewhere, uh, and the short could be in a speaker or in the RCA. So anything that puts out sound that touches metal uh, could cause that. Now. What could it be if it went away? Who knows? You may have a speaker that's starting to go bad, and let's say the voice call is touching the basket, yeah. the basket's touching the door, the door is ground, then when you then it goes away. So if it does it again, you may want to be concerned. All right, so... Seuss. Look at Seuss. That was such a politically correct answer. 
response. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. Uh, no, there won't be any discounts on my radio because we put all the radios on the board. So what we're doing is instead of putting them on the board right away, they're going to go into my car. I get to play with them. Then we're going to pull them out of my car, put them onto the board. Once they run life, Paul usually discounts them at that point. It's no, hey, sorry you're late. No big deal. We're here. Hello from Canada. Hello from Queens. <laughs> All right, so Derek say, help save my marriage. Okay. What do you need? Uh, I'm a pro. She, ha <laughs> she has a Ford Transit Connect. Okay. And the FM reception, it's terrible. Okay. I have changed the head unit and try a small stick on the window antenna. Yeah. With no help. Any okay. Any ideas? Uh, yes, uh, just use your phone and play iHeartRadio. Oh, wow. I mean, at, at the end of the day, the, okay, so... Yeah, but what happened with the, just the regular stations? Yeah, they play iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio will play all your radio stations. Huh. And you gotta use your cell data. Alright, so here's the deal. When it comes to antennas, antennas need to be mounted on the highest part of the vehicle. The problem is, is now you get one of these little vans where they put the antenna in the glass, yeah. and then the van is all metal, you're not going to get any reception. You know, if there was a, an antenna out on the fender far away from everything else like they used to do, you wouldn't be, we wouldn't be having this conversation. If there wasn't a fin up on the top of the van, you wouldn't be having this conversation either because the fin on the top of the van is now the highest point of the van, which means it will get FM reception from everywhere. Yeah. You know, that's the problem. When you put it just on the window, it's all, yeah, it's going to suck. Um, so maybe find some form of like a shark fin roof mount antenna. I'd hate to recommend this because you'd have to drill a hole in the top of the van. and yeah. Oh, that's always scary. But you could that always test it out, put it up top. Those are going to be amplified because they're small, so they're going to have some power and ground that you have to hook up to it. Other than that, though, the phone. Yeah. That's all I got. All right, okay. Albert. It's okay to run amp wire under the car. So if you're going to run a power wire under the car, you need to put it in some form of a sheeting. Think of it as just like when you're wiring conduit through a house and you got to put in that braided or that, that metal loom tubing. Uh, you're going to have to do the same if you put it underneath the car. If you're going to do a power wire, you know, like when we do camera wires, we cover it in loom. It's thin stuff. But the wire run is also very small and it's tucked up and out of the way. When you're doing a four gauge wire or something like that, you want to cover it in a much thicker uh, garden hose, almost thickness stuff that Home Depot sells. Because, you know, rocks, debris, anything like that, it's a big power wire, it's a big fuse. So uh, cover it accordingly. Um, Home Depot sells some, in, some outdoor uh, conduit for uh, regular home AC wire. Yeah. A lot of the guys that do like competitions where they have to run, that's what they cover the stuff in if they're really worried about it. But that's what I would recommend. Yeah. Other than that, no. All right, how can I fix the heat on my speakers using the Amp Pro? How can you what? How can I fix hiss and my speakers using the Amp Pro? Yeah. Okay, so I can tell you this. The Amp Pro puts out five volts of power. That's five volts. That means the gain on the amplifier needs to be down extremely low. Yes. So if you have hissing noise coming from an Amp Pro, more than likely you might have your gain turned up a little bit too high and you're getting floor noise. The hiss is there when the radio is on and or off. The other mean. problem too is it might depend on the amplifier that you're using. The gain, what's the hell? When the amplifier is on or off? Or off. But that's not coming from the amplifier. Uh, how is that even possible? He's there, yeah. With the radio on or off. Oh, okay. So then the, the amp is on. Try turning the gain down first. Because um, that's floor noise. That's just It's just floor noise that's, that, you, that you're hearing. Yeah. Um, but you shouldn't be getting too much. There no. is. You are going to get some floor noise. There is some floor noise that you're going to get. Uh, that's... That I can tell you, there is a little bit of floor noise. But when you set your gains wrong, it does get uh, totally um, amplified. So try turning the gains out first. Sorry I missed most of the shows. Customers, you guys have a great evening. Thanks, Fro. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. No problem, buddy. We'll talk to you next, I'll talk to you Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. All right, uh, 2006 Impala SS. 
I will be switching to the HDC3 12s. Okay. And the wiring to five. Yeah. But I'm curious, will be louder sealing off or keeping the subs four forward? Or should I turn the box around and load off the trunk? That's a great question. So basically the question is what's going to be louder? Firing it back, firing it up, sealing it off. It really just depends yeah. what you're trying to do and the sound you're trying to get. A lot of the times you fire it towards the trunk so that you can get that off of the back sound. Um, you're usually going with some, you know, like just like a, a regular box. And you, you kind of need that because you're not going, well, I, I don't even, I wouldn't say going pro, but not yeah. going SPL. Uh, so you fire it backwards. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, I've heard cars where you fire it up through the rear deck and, or where you fold the seat down and fire it that way. Mm -hmm. The main problem you run into is that you do have to totally seal it off, okay? So if you're gonna fire it up into the rear deck or anything like that, it has to be sealed firing up into the rear deck. No air can get around to the backside of it or into the trunk. Once that happens, the effect is lost. Don't ask me why, it's just what happens. The same is with firing it forward. If you fire it forward, there again, it has to be totally sealed off from the trunk. Once the base is allowed to roll around to the backside, the base is lost. So do what's ever easiest and whichever you are thinking, but you kind of can't half-ass the firing up or firing forward. It has to be totally sealed off. Okay. All right. Um, 2018 Honda Core EXL 10 speaker system with the 10 speaker system. Okay. Uh, can I switch out the six and a half in the front and rears and get a better sound? So anytime you're replacing a system, uh, replacing a, a speaker in a factory system that's a premium factory system, that's where it gets really tricky, as you can guess. Um, we've run into situations where the factory speakers, there was nothing we did. We went through every speaker we had in the stock room and at the end of the day, they all sucked in comparison to what the factory was doing. Now, that's not to say that they didn't sound better at certain things, but what this customer was going for, they weren't doing. Like, it had a lot of bass to it, and though we got better mid-range, we lost all the bass, and he hated it. So it's tough to say, oh yeah, just slap a new set of Focals in there, and it's going to sound amazing. It might not. Uh, the ohm load might be weird, like it might have like a 3.3 or 3.2 or some strange ohm load that is going to reduce some of the power going to it. Or it might be that that's where the most of the bass is coming from out of that 6.5. And, and when you go to an aftermarket speaker, because all aftermarket speaker manufacturers have subwoofers, a lot of the times their mid-range don't put out a ton of bass. So it's gonna be one of those, like I don't have an answer for you, you're just gonna to have to kind of experiment. And unfortunately, sometimes that's what you just have to do. Yeah. Uh, which sucks because it involves opening and closing your wallet. So if you're gonna buy stuff, make sure you buy something that has a great return program. Yeah, Okay. all right. So let's see, Chris. A couple more and then we gotta get out of here. Yeah, Chris, uh, so the 309 is supposed to fit in a single DIN. Yes. But in your video, you say it has to be bolted in most single DINs. Yes. Use the cage. Yes. Only so that means it won't work, right? And some example, it will not. For example, the 95 Honda Civic, you can get it to no. bolt it in without taking the whole dash apart. Correct. So. It's not made for everything. That's, that's a gimme. And the reason why it doesn't come with a cage is because it's very heavy. It's really, really heavy. So it's got to hold that big screen out, float it. So yeah, it's a single DIN location, but it's an ISO DIN location is what they're calling it, meaning you got to screw it in from the side. So there again, it's not going to work in everything without, you know, we had a guy that bought one yeah. and put it in an older Dodge Ram. The older Dodge Ram, there's no screws. He had to make a big old bracket to get yeah. this thing to mount in his dash. Took him a couple days, yep. figured it out. He got it yep. to work and he loves it. Yep. It's just, it's your level of commitment, we'll call it. Yeah. All right, uh, hi from Brooklyn. Uh, guys, I have a 2008 Yukon with a Bose system amp. Uh, I'm trying to install a five channel amp uh, without running new speaker wires to the doors. How okay. can I do this? What, what is it, Yukon? That's a Yukon. That's a Yukon 2008. 
Well, it depends what kind of speakers and what kind of amp. Well, Probably either, either way, I mean, I mean, more than likely, you're going to be able to use the factory wire. Like you, say, just, yes. you just need to get to the amplifier, which in a Yukon should be a 2005? 2008. 2008 should be in the armrest. So um, I think we did a video not too long ago where we talked yeah. about how to bypass the factory amplifier. Pull up your cup holder in the center console. All the speaker wires you need should be right there. Uh, if you pull the whole pocket out, uh, the amplifier is underneath that. You can get there to it. Um, and I believe you can use a, you can make a bypass for it using like a BHA 2002 or 2003, getting a couple of those. Uh, you can repin it and make a, a connector into that Bose adapter. Um, but yeah, that would, that would be, that would be how I'd do it. All right. Uh, Martin say hello. It's Martin from California. I hey, want Martin. to let you know that you saved me to buy a new five channel lamp. Okay. Uh, I thought it was going bad for the squelching. Yeah. I heard coming from the speaker, but you mentioned the and you episode that you have to turn it down. Game. That's what he did. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to call it a night. Thank you so much for your questions. We could probably go on all night and answer yes. these things, but we need to get home. Uh, yeah, if you guys need shirts, you guys know where to find them. Teespring slash store slash five star. Uh, if you want to support the show, we do do Patreon. Don't forget about the podcast. You can find it on iTunes. You can find it on Podbeam, and you can find it at the Google Play Store. Um, DNF tool drawer is where we keep all our recommendations for tools that we use during our installs. Well, Thanks so much. Don't forget you. to go and watch the YouTube video and register for your free gift. Or you go. Maybe you to can win. win something. Yeah, maybe um, you can win. There again, we're not promoting it here on Facebook. Facebook has nothing to do no. with it. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Uh, just go to YouTube and do the whole YouTube thing. And you I can thank learn you for the support, guys. I appreciate it. Yes, well, thank you so much. Yep. This has been episode 60 of Cardio Talk with him and me. See you We're guys out of here. later. You guys Bye. have a great night as always. Bye.